Hello all, this is the step-by-step -step setup of Oracle 19C Rack and in this particular tutorial we will learn how to add a third node. We already have a two node rack cluster which we have built in the previous video and in this particular video we will be learning how to add the third node to the cluster. This particular setup is done on Rails 7.8, Oracle 19C and VirtualBox 6.1.30. The steps that we need to achieve what to add a node is we need to have a third host which will be provisioned by the Unix team or in our case it's V and we will be sharing the ASM disk, the IP configurations because when we build the two node cluster we only added the IP addresses for the first node and second node so now we will add the IP for the third node. We will extend the cluster home using add node sh. We will extend the database home using add node sh and we will add the instance or new node using dbca. These are the only three steps. There are three commands that we need to run. The add node sh for, for grid home, add node sh for the database home and dbca to add the instance. So it's actually pretty simple. You, if you don't want to watch the video now that you have understood what needs to be done if you don't want to watch the video you can just pause it or you can just skip the next video go ahead set up your lab and add the new node and it should work but however if you want to see how it is done and how what steps we need to exactly do then hang on and we will continue with this particular tutorial what i'll do is i will explain the steps which are required first and once I have explained all the steps, then we will start our lab. The first thing that we need to do is we need to share the ASM disk. So the, the two disk that for one 20 GB disk for the data and four GB disk for OCR. These two disk will be shared on DB1 and DB2. They will not be shared on node three. So we need to attach the disk to the node three and we need to power on the three machines. Once the third machine is up, we need to make sure that the disk is visible. The scan disk is optional because by default, when we set up the Oracle ASM, we configured in such a way that at boot, it will scan for the disk. So this particular command is optional. So directly we will run the list disk and we will see the new disk is visible. The IP configuration, so DB1 and DB2, you already know, this is how it has been set. So we now need to add an IP for the new node DB3 and the IP for DB3 is set up in such a way that it ends with 3. So 0 0.103 becomes a private IP, 1 1.103 becomes the public IP and 1 1.113 becomes the virtual IP. We do not need to add the new scan IPs. The scan IP 3 maximum 3, not it's not maximum, but 3 scan IPs are more than enough. So this is how the ETC host will look like. So this we need to set up as a root. So I have added a public IP for node 3, a private IP for node 3 and a virtual IP for node 3. And this we need to make sure that ETC host is set up on a, in a similar way on all three nodes. Make sure that you set up the passwordless SSH between the grid and Oracle user. And this time we need to make it sure that the DB1 is able to communicate to DB2, DB2 is able to communicate to DB3 and DB1 is able to communicate to DB3. So we need to make sure that each and every host is able to communicate with other hosts using the passwordless SSH. Very important. We will install the cluster verification utility RPM. So this particular RPM will be only available on node 1 because on the node 3 we have not at installed the grid. So this particular utility we will transfer from either node 1 or node 2. We can choose whichever existing nodes we will transfer it to the node 3 and then we will install that particular RPM. So we need to install this. The Once we install the, the command we can optionally we can run the cluffy command so we will say cluffy and because we are doing the node add operation we will do the pre operation and we will specify the node which we are going to add so this is the new node that we are going to add and we have to run this particular command as grid user once the we have verified the that this particular output is good the we can this node that we have provisioned is all good then we can go ahead and extend the grid home the grid home has to be extended or the cluster home has to be extended by grid user. So we will set the, the ORI ENV 
to plus ASM1 if we are running. So remember, this is very important. Remember that we have to run this command from the existing nodes, not from the new node. So we have to add the new node from the existing, either any of the node, which is part of the cluster, we can run this command. So I chose it to be DB1. You can choose, choose DB2. That's not a problem. So we will set the Oracle environment to the grid home or the ASM environment. We'll verify what is the current node configuration. Then under the Oracle home, which is nothing but the grid home because we are, we have set the grid location. So sorry, grid environment. So under the grid home, you will find a directory called add node. Under add node, you will find a binary called add node sh and we will use the add node dot sh and we will do it using the silent method. So what we are saying here is new node, the host name and the virtual IP. And because some of the prerequisites will fail, we will say ignore prerequisites. Once the add node command is successful, we will run aura inst root using the root comma root and we'll run the root and remember this we have to run from the aura inventory and this particular command will run from the grid location so this is the grid home optionally once all of this is done we, we can verify that you know the this the cluffy command we will verify that the node is now added and it is successful so we will verify this using the cluffy command and this time previously we said pre so if you remember here we said pre now we are going to say post so because we are doing the post once the node is added in the on the new node add the entry in etc aura tab so asm3 add the entry in etc aura tab once this particular command is done once add node and aura the aura inst root and root sh is done the new node is part of the cluster so we have successfully extended the grid home or we have now added the node 3 into the into the cluster and if i now run ols nodes minus n minus s you should be able to see third node which is part of the cluster once that is done now we are ready to extend the database home so we we have to extend the database home using the oracle user so we will set the the aura in v uh, to the oracle user uh, sorry oracle database which is running and then again we have to go to the oracle home under oracle home you'll find a directory called add node and we will run add node sh the new node that we want to add to database home ignore prerequisite because some of the prerequisites will fail and then once this particular add node is completed we will go to the oracle home and we will run the root sh using the root user so the once this is done once the add node sh and root sh command is done we have now added the database home which is the now will be the part of the cluster the last thing is once all of this is done now we are ready to add the instance so to add the instance to the cluster we will say dbca silent the name of the instance that we are adding so sorry we are adding the instance so the, the operation is add instance the name of the database so aura 19c and on which node we are going to extend and then we will verify the new node is part of the cluster so these are the steps that we need to do so let's now that we have seen all the steps let's go ahead and see let's share the disk so the i have already have the virtual box here and the three node these two nodes are part of the cluster and this is the third node where we are going to set up the which we are going to add to the cluster so if i go to the first node and if i show you the storage you can see i got 20 gb disk 4 gb disk and similarly on node 2 also i should have a 20 gb disk and 4 gb disk however if i go to the node 3 you will see that two these disks are not available so let me attach those two disks so 20 gb disk i've done that and let me attach the 4 gb disk that's done so 20 gb disk 4 gb disk that's done and sometimes it doesn't get replicated. So what I'll do, I'll close the virtual box and reopen it and verify that those two disks are visible. So 20 GB disk, 4 GB. So we have add, added the, these two disks, the data disk and OCR disk to the node 3. That's all good. So that's done. Now that we have done, so we have shared this, attached the two disks. We are ready to power on all three nodes. The power on it takes a bit of time because the cluster has to come up. Everything has to come up. So right now the time in my watch is 2.29. What I'll, what I'll do is I'll pause the video and come back once all three machines are up and running. I have turned on all the machines. It took close to four minutes for all the machines to turn on. And let me connect to the, the third node. We will verify that the 
the disk are visible on third node so let me connect to the third node and as i mentioned scan disk is not required because the oracle asm is configured in such a way that the disk should be visible so if i do list disk and i can see the data disk which is of 20 gb and ocr disk is visible on node 3 if i do host name you can see it's a db3 so that's good so now what i'll do is i will verify my cluster the verify my existing cluster and ip configuration so let me connect to the first node and let me set the oracle or env to the plus asm because i want to run the crs ctl commands so that's done and now let me run the crs ctl stat rest and you can see that the two nodes which are part of the cluster is db1 and db2 so these are the two nodes which are part of the cluster we do not have node 3 so if i do db1 if we can see it's there if i do db2 we can see it's there however if i do db3 you can see that i don't get any output which proves that the cluster is not there what also i can do is i can go to the node tree and i can run ps minus ef grep pmon and you should be able to see nothing running and if i go to the if i go to the grid home there is no if i show you pwd we are in the grid home and total zero and if i go to the oracle home then total zero which means these particular directories are empty and if i do the same thing on node one and node two you should be able to see the output so this is the this is the grid home and this is the okay so i think i got the in both case i got the let me do this okay for some reason it okay so i'm logged in as a grid user and it's not it cannot access the okay so no i'm not logged in as a grid okay so okay so let's do this let's do this okay so v19 what I okay so plus minus l v19 oh so it's not oracle it's database okay and if i show you the database is there on this particular node so the directives okay so this was wrong it's actually a database software not the oracle okay and if i go show you here on node 3 then you can see under the v19 database there is nothing so the grid the node 3 is completely empty so that's good now we what we are going to do is we are going to verify our ip configuration so let me show you the etc host on all three nodes how it looks like so cat etc host so you can see that i have added the ip for node 3 so let me so this let me grab for db3 and you can see i set the public ip the private ip and virtual ip and similarly i have done it on all three nodes so this is on node 3 so i've done it on node 2 as well so that's done so this is how the ip i have already made sure that the passwordless SSHS is working between grid and oracle user so that's also done so now we will install the cvu disk on third node so let's let me transfer that particular file from the first node so let's do that so let me go to this particular directory and under this you will find this particular cvu rpm so let me transfer that to third node that's done so now we have transferred that so let me go to the third node and let me install that so this is third node so let me go to the third node so host name third node and let me go to this and do rpm that's done so if i try to do again install so it will say so first time it got installed and now if i try to install it it says it's already installed which means we have successfully installed the cluster verification utility on the third node so that's good now what we are going to do is from any of the existing nodes we have to run the cluffy command so we have to run the cluffy command from existing nodes and remember that we have to run this particular command as the grid user if we are adding the cluster so that's done and also i will set the environmental variable to the asm so that's done and let me run the cluffy command from the either we can run it from the node 1 or node 2 so we are saying cluffy stage node add pre and this is the node that we are going to add so let me run this command this particular command takes a bit of time for you know because it does all the verification so it takes a bit of time so what i'll do is again i will pause the video and come back once the output of this particular command is on the screen 
so if you see most of the tests are passed so there are a couple of tests this is the command most of the tests are passed however there are some tests which got failed and that's because of the resolve.conf entry and the name server because we are not using the we are not using the dns so that we are we have not integrated this particular ad so some of the nodes some of the checks have failed however most of the checks are passed and this the checks that i have failed i, I am going to ignore them because these are not like they, they are required but they are not mandatory this is our lab this is our personal lab so i'm going to ignore them so once the checks are done so what i'll do now is so we are now going to extend the grid home so to extend the grid home we need to be grid user this is very important we need to be grid user so before extending the home let me run the ols nodes command and show you which are the nodes which are part of my cluster so you can see the two nodes which are part of my cluster are uh, is node one and node two node three is not part of my cluster and also what i can do is if i go to the oracle user if i go as the oracle user and if i run sql plus as sysdba and if i run a script uh, let me show you that script before running so this is a pretty simple script it's it's just queries v dollar instance and v dollar database so if i run this particular query into the as a sysdba we should be able to see that i got two nodes which are part of the cluster so the instance name is c1 and c2 running on db1 and db2 instance is in open state the database name is aura 19c and the open mode is read write which is started a couple of minutes before so that the instance the, there are two nodes which are part of my cluster as you can see ols nodes minus s minus n you can see okay so i need to run this particular command as the grid user so let me run that as a grid user so you can see there are two nodes which are part of my cluster db1 and db2 and on both the nodes the database is running so our aim is to have three nodes in this cluster and the instance should be there should be three instances for this particular database so that's what we are going to do so we are on the first step where we are now going to add the we are going to add the cluster home to this particular cluster so that's what we are going to do so first thing that we need to do we, uh, we have already seen the ols node so let me set the aura env to plus asm1 that's done then what we are going to do is let me go to the oracle home and add node directory so that's done the oracle home in case of grid is nothing but the grid home so dbi oracle v19 grid under that i've gone to a directory called add node if i do ls minus l you will find that is a there is a binary called add node sh so what i'll do is i will show you that we can run the add node sh so let me set the that's done let me go to the the grid home and what we can do is we can run add node sh in as a gui so the you can whatever i'm doing via the command line so you can see whatever we are doing and here we can specify which node that we want to add so and it will do all of the checks however if we don't want to do it via that so let's do this so i'll give node 3 and the virtual ip for node 3 VIP, and if i click ok and if i click next 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 and submit is going to add it so this is one way this is the gui way however i will not do it using the gui way i will run the add node command this is the command that i'm going to run i'll show you that command so let me clear the screen this is the command add node.sh in the silent mode the new node that i'm adding is db3 the whip for that node is db3 whip and we ignore some of the prerequisites because they i know that they will fail so i have hit the enter this particular command takes a bit of time it takes the command will takes a bit of time so what i'll do is i will pause the video and i'll come back in between just to show you how the output looks like so right now if i go to the node tree and if i go to cd slash dbi slash v19 sorry slash oracle slash v19 grid here you can see that it's completely empty 
this particular command is going to transfer the cluster home, the grid home to the new node and is going to add this particular node as part of the cluster. However, we need to also run this, these commands which will finish the final operation. This is only going to transfer the binaries and set up the cluster. So let's wait for this command to run. So I'll pause the video and come back. The time in my watch is 2.45. So this command should take maybe 15 minutes or so. So let me pause the video and come back. As you can see, some of the prerequisites are failed and that's why I mentioned ignore prerequisites and it says copy files to remote node in progress. So let's go here and see if the, and you can see on May 23, that's today's date. So if I show you date, then May 23, the binaries have started appearing at 1447. So current time is 1447. So at around this time, the binaries have started transferring from the first node that's happening. And if I go to the node one or node two, if I go to this particular directory, then you should be able to see the original time of this file. So ls minus l, ls minus l, you should see that this particular cluster was installed. So let me do ls minus lrt. So this particular cluster was installed somewhere on May 2 and now on May 23, there are some updates, which means the new activities are happening. So this particular cluster was installed on May 2 and on May 23, the new node, the host name, the files have been transferred to the new node. And this particular command is still going to take some time. So I just wanted to show you that files have started appearing on the third nodes. The copy command is running. So I'll pause the video and come back. So the add node command has completed successfully. So we ran add node.sh. So that command completed successfully and that's done. So the, the we now it says clearly that we need to run, you need to execute the ori inst root sh and root sh or node tree. So it's clearly there and we need to execute this as part of the, as a root user. So let me keep a note of this. So I'll keep a note of this. So this, and this is also, also mentioned here. So now on a newly added node, we need to run this particular two commands. So let's do that. So let me take this command. Let me go to the new node. And now the host name is db3.db.com. So this is a, and I'm logged in as a root user. So let me run the first command. So that's done. And now I'm going to run the, the root sh from the, as the, from the grid user, from the grid home, uh, but as a root user, sorry, as a root user from the grid home, I'm going to run the root sh. This particular command is going to take some time. The root sh takes uh, a bit of time. So it's now going to relink the, the binary as rack and it's going to set up the pmon, asm, everything. So this, again, this particular step takes a bit of time. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and come back once this particular step is about to complete. So as you can see, almost all the operations are completed. So let me go to the third node. So as already I'm on third node. So let me go open another session and let's see if the PMON process has appeared on the third node. And as, as you can see, the PMON process has not appeared as of now. So let me do one thing. Let me run this particular command as watch and Okay, so just now when I ran that particular command, the pmon process did not come, but now the pmon process has appeared. So let me close this command and run the p ps minus ef. So you, you can see just before few seconds when I run that command, the output was not there, but the pmon process has appeared because the here as part of the step 18, it has added the cluster and started the cluster on the third node. So that's done. So we have now run the two commands on the on the third node so now we have added the cluster home so optionally by default the some reason it doesn't add the entry in etc or our type so let me do that let me manually add the entry in etc or our type if it has not already done it i know that the cluster 19c cluster doesn't add it so let me add that so that's done so and let me now if we run the crsctl command on the first node clear and if i run the crsctl then we should be able to see the db3 
it's also part of the cluster so if i show you the db3 is also part of the cluster and most of the services are online on node 3 and now if i run ols nodes minus s minus n you can see that the three nodes which are part of the cluster is db1 db2 and db3 at this moment only the cluster is added to the to the the cluster home is extended so the database is still not running on the new node that we have we have not reached to that particular step as of now so if i run the check status dot sql you should be able to see the instance is still running on the first two nodes only although the cluster is now cluster has got three nodes however the database is not running on all three nodes we have not reached to that so we still have two more steps that to be done what we need to do is we need to add the database home and we need to add the instance so that we we are going to move to that particular step so we now need to extend the database home so the previous steps we did as a grid user the next steps we have will be doing as an oracle user so let me let me log in as the oracle user that's done let me set the environment variable to the database that's done echo oracle home you will be able to see that we have now v19 database that's the database home so that's good and what we are going to do now is we are going to run the add node sh again this particular command when we try to do the grid we ran add node sh so that the the add node sh that we ran was from the grid home now exactly same command add node sh but this time we are going to run it from the database home and we can also launch this particular utility add node sh using the gui so something very similar so it will prompt us all the options however i will not choose that particular option and what i'll do is i will add the database home using the using the command line but remember we have to be you logged in as oracle user and this add node if i go to add node so you will find under this there will be okay so under this you will be able to find a directory called add node and i'm not sure why i can't find it okay so i i don't know why i did okay i did not log into i did not go to that particular directory at all so if i show you the if under this there will be a sub directory called add node and now pwd so oracle home add node and under this you will again find add node sh and this add node sh we need to run via the oracle user so let me run this particular command so let me clear the screen so i am logged in as the oracle user i am in oracle home and i'm going to run add node sh and the node that i'm going to add to the cluster is db3 and i'm going to say ignore prerequisites so that's done again i i mentioned that we can run this particular command as the as the oracle user using the gui so if i do that log out if i do that log out and if i the command has started i have already initiated the command so that's running but i will just show you that we could have done this using the gui so if i click on the password give it a minute the command is running in the background so it's taking the system resources that's why this is slightly slower and remember this machine is not powerful i'm running three different i'm running three different host sorry three different watch rack servers on the same machine so if i now set the environmental variable to oracle and if i go to cd oracle home under that add node pwd and under this you'll find a binary called ls minus l add node dot sh if i take this and if i launch if i execute it it should launch a gui and this particular gui we can add the node using this particular gui so this in this time we do not have to specify the the public ip and private we just need to know which node that we are adding so that's it it's actually it's going to i believe it's going to automatically show that the node that we are going to add so let's give it a minute the, i have already executed the command in the background that's running at this moment and you can see db1 and db2 they are already in gray and db3 is checked you can i do not know whether you can see it clearly db3 is checked and if i click on next 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 it's going to do prerequisite checks and it's going to add the whole the third node into the database home 
So what I'll do is I'll go to the third node. So I'll show you if the Oracle binaries have started appearing. LS minus L, you can see the the Oracle binaries have at not appeared on the third node. The command has initiated. It has not at reached to the third node. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video and come back once the binaries have started appearing. So the time is close to 302. So as you can see, the 7% then copy files to remote server. So now if I if you, the in the database home total zero. Now if I run ls minus l, you can see at the time is close to 15.04 and around 15.03 the files have started appearing on the third node. So that's the database home software is getting extended to the third node. So let me pause again. I just wanted to show you this output. Let me pause it again and come back once this command is completed. So that's done. So we have done the add node sh. So now as a root, I need to run, but this time from the v19 v19 oracle sorry it's not v19 oracle it's v19 database i do not know why i mentioned that so from here if i clear the screen as a root user on node 3 under this you'll find a soft binary called root sh so i need to run this as a root user which i have already done so let me run this as root sh i don't know not get copying so that's done that's done. So we have now successfully, you can see it also mentioned it here. We, the V19 database root SH that we have already done. So you can see I've done that. So that's done. So the next part is the final part where we are now going to add the instance to the third node. Again, what we can do is we can run this particular utility using the DBCA. So what I'll do is first I will hit the command. So I've already set the environmental variable. Now, this dbca will be part of the bin so if i go to if i come back if i go to bin and if i show you ls minus l dbca then you should be able to see that i am under the oracle home bin directory and under that you will find a dbca which using this dbca silent method i'm going to add the instance to the 19c and on the third node so that's what i'm going to do so let me run this this is the final command that we are going to done, run so that i have already executed that command what i can also do as i have already mentioned that we can run this particular command we, we can do this operation using the gui so let me clear the screen let me go to the bin under bin you will find a dbca if i hit the dbca that, that it's going to launch this and here we have to choose the option which i will show you which option so we have to choose the option the mm, configure an existing database so we have to choose the second okay sorry we have to choose oracle rag database instance management and we have to say add instance and then it will choose which okay which instance we need to add so we can do this using the gui also so i have already run this particular command and it's saying preparing for the db operation and the dbca command seems to have completed successfully and that that means the instance should have added so let me let me go to the let me connect as SQL plus as sysdba and let me run check status dot SQL and you can see that now I got three instances C1, C2, C3 running on DB1, DB2, DB3. They are all in open mode, read write mode and the first two instances were started around 431 and the new instance is started around 1509 so it took like the the three commands took approximately half an hour so the the or 40 minutes my system is not that powerful your the servers in production will be much powerful so we can finish this operation in a much faster way no downtime is needed to add an operation i will mention that this is completely online operation there is no downtime which is needed for this particular operation so with this particular tutorial we saw how to add 
a new node to two node rack cluster so we already had a two node rack cluster and we have converted that particular cluster into the third node so now if i go to the third node and if i do ps minus ef grep pmon you should be able to see that now i got aura 19c3 and asm process both pmon are running and if i set the asm3 and if i do crs ctl stat res minus t the database is running on all three nodes so that's all good so we have extended the cluster home we have extended the database home and we have added the instance on a new node so we have done all of these three steps in this particular tutorial so with this i will stop this particular video thank you for watching see you in next tutorial and if you like the content which i am uploading if you enjoy the content and if you are able to study or gather the knowledge from my youtube channel please do the please do subscribe to my channel and hit the like button thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial bye bye